Good morning and welcome. What a delight it is to come to you again. We are, of course, experiencing these days of virtual worship. I want to especially welcome the members and friends of Word of Life International Church. Word of Life International Church is located at 47 Main Street. We are a friendly church and friendly people always make you welcome. We are delighted to be with you this morning. We want to invite you to bow your head wherever you are. Let's invite God's presence and his help as we minister his word this morning in sound and spoken word. Father, how blessed we are because of your goodness and your loving kindness. Thank you for the privilege of proclaiming your word today to your people. I pray your blessings upon all that we do. Anoint us for the task and use us for the inspiration. I pray, God, that you would bless sound and your word. And, Father, as ears hear and hearts are open, I pray that you would minister in a very powerful way that we might be a better people because of your word today. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for another Sunday morning. We rejoice, just like David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. I pray that you will open our eyes to see today and use us to bring a blessing to your people. And God, we will give all the glory and all the honor to you. For we ask these things through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We want to invite again Alex to come and bless us and worship. Thanks 
falling rain, rising in just a time, freely forever. One day is coming, a glorious day, oh glorious day. Thank you so much, my brother Alex. That's the hope that we have. One day we will see Jesus face to face. I am glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad that Jesus rescued me. I'm here to let you know that he loves you this morning. He wants to guide us. He wants to help us. He wants to be our strength. He wants to be all that we need. And all that we have to do is to put our trust in him. I want to welcome you again, uh, the members and friends of Word of Life International Church, and of course, all those who are joining us. We are so happy that you have chosen to join us in our worship this morning. I want to speak to you on a, what I think is a very important topic. The topic is clear eyes lead to a calm heart. Clear eyes lead to calm hearts. And the scripture is found in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 15 and through 17. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 15 through 17. Perhaps you might have your Bible nearby. Why don't you grab it? I want to read these words in your hearing. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 17. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I want to read the 17th verse again. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. That's where I get my topic this morning. Clear eyes 
lead to calm hearts. Our text this morning, of course, is found in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 15 to 17. I trust that in your leisure you might find time to read it and reflect on it because I think it would be a source of inspiration to you. It is an amazing account of faith in God's provision and protection in a time of great danger and even threat of death. Let's look at the background for a little bit. The account deals with a time when the king of Aram warred against Israel. The Arameans or Syrians were inveterate foes of Israel and sought many times to subjugate them. Elisha at this time was Israel's prophet. And when the king of Aram would make battle plans to war with Israel, his plans, however secret, God made them known to Elisha, who disclosed them to the king of Israel and by his warnings caused the king of Israel to take evasive action. The king of Aram learned of that the fact that Elisha was somehow passing word to the king of Aram, the king of Israel. And so he sent a detachment, an army of men, to capture Elisha. Scripture tells us that they came by night and surrounded Dover, the entire uh, city where Elisha resided. They came by, and it must have been very intimidating. Elisha's servant was the first to discover the danger. And he lamented to Elisha with these words, Oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant was in trouble as well as Elisha, but Elisha was not trouble. And so Elijah responded, don't be afraid. Elisha answered, those who are for us are more than those who are against us. I want to say that to us this morning to you who are listening, who are the hearing of my voice. Don't be afraid because those who are for you are more than those who are against you. I don't care what you're up against this morning, what problem that might be in your life, what situation you might be in. We serve the God of the universe, the one who creates out of nothing. He has done it in the past. He has solved problems. He's met needs. He's camped fears. He's ministered to needs and brought people out of situations in the past. And he will do it again. All that he requires of us is that we put our trust in him. And so soon after these words of consolation, Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray open his eyes that we may see. There are several principles that can be derived from this amazing event that the child of God, I believe, can learn from. And I want to examine a few with you this morning. The first thing that comes to mind is how we see situations make a difference. Again, how we see situations make a difference. The first insight that got my attention was that Elisha and his servant both faced the same terrifying situation. And one was fearful and the other was faithful. Let me repeat that again. The first insight that got my attention was that Elisha and his servant both faced the same terrifying situation. And one was fearful and the other was faithful. So, how we see and perceive terrifying situations make all the difference. Doubtless, Elisha knew about all this too. God revealed the battle plans of the king of Aram, and no doubt God had revealed this attack as well. 
It is likely that Elisha allowed himself to be trapped so that the subsequent entrapment of the Armians might work to God's glory and for Elisha's good. By contrast, notice the reaction of the servant. When he saw the host compass the city of Dothan, both with horses and chariots, he ran to Elisha and exclaimed, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He was in trouble and he knew it. He was terrified. He no doubt was terrified and was focusing on the terrifying situation through the lens of his own strength and abilities. That's how he saw the chariots. That's how he saw the opposition. That's how he saw the enemies through the eyes of his own strength and his own abilities. Indeed, it was terrifying. He forgot completely the covenant keeping God of Israel, who made a promise that if Israel would walk in obedience, no one would be able to stand against them all the days of their lives. What a promise. God made this promise to Israel, and I want you to know that he makes this promise to you as well. If you would put your trust in him this morning, if we would be willing and obedient, if we would honor God, God has promised to be our defense. He has promised to come to our rescue when we are in trouble. Yes, we are going to face difficulties in life. We're going to have our ups and downs, but thank God we have Jesus who promised I'll never leave you or I'll never forsake you. And he doesn't come into our lives as a spectator. He comes as one who strengthens, who gives us the ability to, to face life difficulties and overcome. When our world is falling apart and we are facing life's battles, it is easy to focus on the problems and not the solutions. And our adversary doesn't make it any easier. He takes delight in shooting us when we are down. My experience teaches me that when we are down, faith tends to take wings and fly away. Perhaps you experience that as well. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, and verse 23 through 27, we have a stirring account where Jesus and the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee in a boat. Suddenly, a furious storm came up with the waves breaking over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was asleep on a cushion in a stern, in the stern. And the disciples woke him and asked, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? I am always amazed at the fact that here the disciples were in a boat, in a storm. They're wading the water out of the boat, trouble, overwhelmed, feeling that their lives are going to be lost. But Jesus is asleep. What makes the difference? The word of God tells us they came to Jesus and said, Teacher, don't you care that we drown? I want you to know that Jesus cares. He always cares. And he's never too late. He comes to us in whatever situation we find ourselves. The gospel of Matthew states, He woke up and rebuked the wind. And said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the scripture says, the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He then said to the disciples, and I believe that he's saying to us, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said one to another, who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. May I say to you this morning that it is still true that Jesus has power over nature and the wind and the sea obey him. But not only the wind and the sea, the problems in your life, the difficulties that we face, whatever situations that we are in, he still has power over them. And all we need to do is to turn to him in faith 
For the scripture tells me without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I want to remind us this morning that Jesus still is in the business of rebuking the howling winds and calming the stormy seas in our lives when we call upon him. We used to sing a chorus in the 60s and 70s. Well, you can can date me. You know how old I am. That was an inspiration to me and to so many others. And the words, in my opinion, are timeless. It goes... Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I want to invite you to turn your eyes on Jesus this morning. He is more than enough for any and all situations. My second principle is... Fear can blind us to a most powerful ally. Fear can blind us to our most powerful ally. Someone has said that fear is the most dominating demon in the world today. Did you hear that? Fear is the most dominating demon in the world today. Another has said that there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. One fear not for every day of the year. I didn't check this quote, but if it is true, it tells us loud and clear that God doesn't want us to live one day or one moment in fear. He wants us to walk in faith and to be confident and to know that if he is with us, we can face whatever situation that comes into our lives. Elisha's servant was blinded to the horses and the chariots of fire surrounding them until Elisha spoke these faithful words. Do not be afraid. I just love those words. Do not be afraid. And those or those who are for us are more than those who are against us. And then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, Open his eyes and let him see. I'm going to take poetic license and say, I have to believe that when Elisha's servant saw the Lord's host surrounding Dothan, when the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the chariots of fire, when he saw the angels surrounding Dothan, all of a sudden he straightened up. His fear turned to faith, and he knew that he knew that everything was going to be all right. I want to let you know this morning that when you fix your eyes on Jesus, when you put your trust in him, when you're leaning on him, I have a feeling, not just a feeling, I have the assurance that everything will be all right. If whatever might be in your life and you're facing this morning, I believe that you should hear this word. If God is for you, who can be against you? And this brings me to my third principle. When our eyes are clear, it leads to a calm heart. When our eyes are clear, it leads to calm hearts. Why is Elisha calm? cool and collected, and his servant so fearful. To be sure, Elisha was not denying reality. He knew that the army of the king of Aram was formidable. But to Elisha, what was even more formidable was the army of God. When we know that God is with us, when we know that God is for us, we can face any storm, we can walk on with confidence knowing it's going to be all right because everything is in our ha- in the hands of our mighty God. Elisha's walk with God was the secret to his life of victories. He had a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. 
And according to the writer of Hebrews, he walked by faith. And in so doing, he overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised him. Elisha saw not only the temporal, but the eternal. And to him, the eternal was even more real than the temporal. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In another place, Paul tells us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We are in a serious time when we need to see clearly. Seeing clearly encourages confidence and gives us hope for life's battles. When what we see overwhelms and threatens us, when what we see makes us fearful, let's remember God is a very present help in times of trouble. And God's help is bigger than our need and closer than we think or feel. I want to repeat that again because I think that it's so important to hear and to uh, uh, experience and to trust. God is a very present help in times of trouble. God's help is bigger than our need and closer than we think or feel. And so we come to the fourth principle. With clear eyes, God directs our steps. When our eyes are clear, when our eyes have been opened by God, when we are walking and living according to God's promises, when our lives are informed uh, uh, by God's word, we can be sure that God will direct our steps. On the spiritual and physical attack can be terrified. I've been there. And perhaps you have been there. And if you haven't been there yet, you will. It must have been challenging for Elisha as well. For he was a man, the scripture tells us, that was subject to like passion. In other words, he had emotions. He had feelings. He was just like all of us. Sometimes we are up and sometimes we are down. Sometimes life's difficulties get us down. Sometimes we are overwhelmed. The same thing was true for Elisha. But what was different was the fact that Elisha had confidence in God. Elisha walked with God. Elisha sought God's kingdom first. Elisha uh, was fixed on, on, on the promises or on God who was able to take care of him in, in whatever situation. The scripture tells us, notice, after Elisha prayed for the servant's eyes to be opened, he prayed for the army of the kings of the king of Aram's eyes to be blinded. You heard that? After Elisha prayed that the servant's eyes be opened, he prayed for the army of the king of Aram's eyes to be blinded. This may have been to humble the king of Aram and his army blinded at this time after Elisha prayed the army of Aram became blind and Elisha led the vanquished army from Dothan the scripture tells us the Samaria approximately 10 miles to the capital of Israel the enemy was now at the mercy of the king of Israel who asked master or father shall we kill them Shall we kill them? The king of Israel easily could have slaughtered them. But Elisha said, no, let's have mercy. Let's throw a party, a feast. Let's feed them and send them back home. What a victory. That's how God works in our lives. That's how God turns 
what was meant for evil into good, when we trust him, when we live according to his word, when we put our confidence in God. This brings me to the victory of Calvary. Our adversary, the devil, succeeded in killing our blessed Savior on what we call a Good Friday. But bless God, God raised Jesus from the dead on Easter and conquered death, hell, and the grave. If he can do that, if he can conquer death, he can conquer anything. He can conquer anything in your life and in my life because of the victory of Calvary. We can have clear eyes that lead to calm hearts in whatever situation we face. And this brings me to my last point. God will fight for us. God will fight for us. God stands ready and able to fight our battles. Sometimes we all act like Elisha's servant when faced with the difficulties of life. We do need our spiritual eyes to be open. We need, need to know that God will fight for us. Seeing with our natural eyes, things look really bad for Elisha. And defeat indeed was certain. But Elisha, unlike his servant who asks, what shall we do? Knew that those who were for them were more than those who were against them. When we do not see God in our circumstances, I want you to know that we face danger. The enemy, the, our adversary, is able to frustrate and overwhelm us. But when we live our lives with confidence in God and know that he is in all our circumstances and he is causing all of our circumstances to work together for our good, we are able to walk with confidence, with our head held high and our back straightened. We can move into the future with tremendous hope because we know that we know that the Lord is with us. In closing, let's remember, God wants to do the same for us. He wants to intervene in our lives just like he did in Elisha and Elisha's servant. An overwhelming situation, yes. An army that spoke certain defeat for the servant of Elisha as well as Elisha. But Elisha had confidence. He had confidence in the living God. I want to remind you, the scripture tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he will be the same forever. And there is no secret what God can do. What he did for Elisha, he will do for us. When our eyes are clear, when we are seeing according to God's word, when our eyes have been opened by God, we can remember, we can be sure that everything is going to be all right, that God is going to take care of us. I want to invite you this morning to trust him, to turn to him, to draw strength from him. He promised that he will help us. I wanted you to hear this promise found in Isaiah chapter 41 in the verse 10. The scripture tells us and uh, Isaiah was speaking to Israel. And God said to Isaiah, don't be afraid for I am with you. Do not be dismayed or overwhelmed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Why don't you bow your head with me? I want to pray with you. I want somehow the Spirit of God to come upon us. And so that as we face the rest of this day, and even the week ahead, we will walk with confidence knowing that we do not walk alone because God walks beside us. Bow your head with me. Wherever you are, in your home, perhaps you might be in your car, I want you to know that the God that we have spoken of, the God of Elisha, the God of Abraham and Isaac, the God of our Lord Jesus, is our God. Father, we come to you this morning. 
We come in the name of Jesus. We come because of Calvary. We come because Jesus closed his eyes. And before he did, he proclaimed it is finished. He won the victory for us. And God, this morning we put our trust in him. I pray for any man who is out there listening, a woman who might be listening to us today. I pray that the Spirit of God would come over them and that God, you would pour into them grace for the days ahead. I pray that you would you would lift their spirit. I pray today that you will minister powerfully as only you can in the name of Jesus. Just touch today. Just work. Use your word today to inspire. And God will give glory and we will give praise to you. Help us not to fear, but to trust your grace that is all sufficient in this time of need and in our time of need. Help us to see you, for seeing you lead to a calm heart. Come close to us, Father, we pray. Teach us the greatness of your presence in all the battles of life. We ask these things through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We receive word from our general church, and we learned that just last night that one of our members was stricken by the virus. And I want to lift that sister to God this morning. May I say to you, my friend, my brother, my sister, that God is more than me. God is not phased or overwhelmed by a virus. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. The winds and the waves still obey him. Join me again as we pray for this sister. And let's pray for those who are on the front lines. We've been doing this ever Sunday um, since the, uh, wait in the wake of the virus. Let's keep praying. The scripture tells me men ought always to pray and not to faint. Because when we pray, things happen. When we pray, God comes into our situation. And when God comes into our situation, the result is always victory. God has a way of turning things around. He has the last word in our lives. And in any situation, all he wants from us is that we have faith and confidence in him. Father, I lift my sister to you this morning. Lying on her bed, Lord, her lungs fill with the virus. The enemy just buff it and seek my God to frustrate and overwhelm her. But in the name of Jesus, we stand upon your word and your promise to us that by your stripes we heal. I pray today that you will go to her home and Father, visit her with your presence. And bring healing to her body. We, we, we rebuke this virus in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would arrest it and cause it to die. And restore her to full health. And we'll give you the glory and the praise. If you believe in the power of prayer, why don't you join me and just give God praise. Father, we honor you. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We stand upon your word. They have not failed one word of all your glorious promises. And so, Father, we're going to stand still like the prophet and watch you work on our behalf. Your promise and your promises will never fail. I continue to pray for the authorities, Lord, our president, and his cabinet, and governors, and mayors across this land who will face, Lord, with, with bringing uh, solutions to this problem. I pray that you will direct them, help them to be clear-eyed, help them to look to you, 